Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for thedailysheeple.com and this is your news shot. I want to go to the Telegraph. Here is another remarkable AI article. AI implants will allow us to control our homes with our thoughts within 20 years. This is according to a government report. Again, folks, this is how close we are to the melding of mind and machine in a way that you just can't possibly imagine. And 20 years is, to me, conservative. If you ask me, it's going to be a lot sooner than that. You're going to start seeing this roll out very soon. Maybe not so much in implants, but you're going to start seeing, due to the rapid advancement in nanotechnology, you're going to start seeing um, the wearables start to come out. Cell phones, as you know them, within five years will not exist. Now, you may have one, or you may remember and have fond memories of them, but they're going to totally transform in a way that, I, I mean, it is just unbelievable how fast this is advancing. I want to get into this piece, though, because this has some very um, difficult things for me to accept. The first thing is, of course, anything that you implant into your body is going to have some sort of consequence, you know, whether it be an autoimmune response, whether it be that you give basically any corporation or government a backdoor into your brain. Think about that. Just for a second, let that sink in. Anytime that implant doesn't update, what are they throwing in there? You know, does that implant actually interface with your brain? Well, it would have to because if it's thought driven and it's picking up your thoughts, well, then there's a brain machine interface. And if there's a brain machine interface, what are they adding in to that information stream? Because remember, it's going to be a send receive thing. You're going to say, OK, house, I want my lights to turn on. So you think it. Well, your house is going to tell you. Hey, brain, I turned my lights on. And you're going to have to receive that information. What else could these institutions or organizations or companies or hackers do to your brain without you even knowing it's happening? These are very extreme but real situations that I think we're going to confront sooner rather than later. I want to get into this. It says artificial intelligence nanomachines will be injected into humans within 20 years to repair and enhance muscles, cell and bone, and other things, according to a senior investor at IBM. John McNamara, who works at IBM Hursley Innovation Center in Hampshire in the UK, submitted evidence to the House of Lords Artificial Intelligence Committee which is considering the economic, ethical, and social implications of AI. Let me stop there for a second. There is no government in the world. There is no corporation in the world. There's no human being right now in the world that will stop the implementation of AI. It is going to happen. It depends on how they roll it out. It's being rolled out right now, and it's in its infancy. But let me tell you something, folks. If this is not done right, you're talking about the end of humanity. It's really that simple. It's either done right where it enhances our lives and our experience. And I say enhance, meaning that we don't implant things into our bodies. We're not looking to achieve immortality and play God. We are using it to better ourselves, to better our lives, to maybe free ourselves from having to do arduous labor. Perhaps, you know, I gave an example last week of how farming, uh, big agro right now is toying with crops that are sown, they're maintained, and they're harvested without, human, without a human touching it. Now, that would be great because that would free up. I know a lot of people are like, no, it wouldn't be great because all these jobs would disappear. Yes! Yes, the concept of you having to labor your tuchus off to get a paycheck would be gone. 
And instead, what would we do? Well, we would get up in the morning and say, by God, I want to look into this today. I want to research this. I want to study this. I want to go to the moon. You could do anything you want because you have the time now because the machines have taken the need for human beings to harvest the food. Now, the machines do it. There are so many different things that we could do with machines if we do this right, but not doing it in a way that seeds our humanity. We can't do that. If we start seeding our humanity and allowing this AI to overtake humanity, you cannot imagine the consequences that are going to take place. Listen to this. Mr. McNamara said that within just two decades, technology may have advanced so much that humans and machines are effectively melded together, allowing for huge leaps forward in human consciousness and recognition. I'm going to stop there. Wouldn't it be interesting? Wouldn't it be awesome to say, man, you know, I really, I really wish that I knew how to speak Spanish. And you would just then think about it, download it, and you know Spanish. Last week, I highlighted some emerging tech of the Google Pixel second generation phone that now has the capability of translating for you in real time. I mean, it's the universal translator, you know? Now, a lot of fears are, well, if you take away human labor, how, how can people buy the food? Got to do away with money. You have to do away with the concept of money. You have to implement a system where we take care of ourselves. You know, I've heard a lot of people poo-poo communism. And the way that it's implemented on a macro scale is certainly wrong. On a micro scale, we see it all the time with communes. Communes get together. You have a community where people work together towards a common goal. You have oftentimes max liberty max privacy, but everybody has a swim lane and a purpose and they do what they need to do and they get the job done on a micro level. It works fantastic on a macro level. Not so much. We have to be able to overcome greed and self-centeredness before we can even go there. But I'm telling you right now, if we don't make these changes now and we don't we have to start looking at this technology and understand that this is something you can't kick down kick the can down the road it's not going to work if you kick the can down the road there's no saving us we're done we're we are done for there's no doubt in my mind there's no way that you can roll this out right without having some serious forethought serious research and having people of honor, ethical people, really put their heads together and come up with a way forward to not do this wrong. Because it's very easy to do it wrong, but it's also very easy to do it right. So we have to put greed aside and do what's best for humanity. And by doing that, This could really benefit us. It says here, quote, we may see AI nanomachines being injected into our bodies, he told Piers. Says these will provide huge medical benefits, such as being able to repair damaged cells, muscle, and bones, perhaps even augment them. Of course, that's a huge benefit. Think about that for a second. How awesome would that be? Think about the elimination of human error due to having the machines, the AI, go in and do complex surgery, neurosurgery, things like that. This is stuff that's already being tested and being implemented now, right now on a small scale. But in the next couple of years, when these big medical companies and these big, huge insurance companies start to see how much money they save, 
not just from the money savings from labor, but also the money savings due to tort, all the tort, all the uh, lawsuits and the malpractice starts to go down because now you have a machine that knows exactly what to do. It has the capability of doing things faster, doing things more effectively, doing things more accurately. It's going to revolutionize medicine. It's also going to put the doctors out of business. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Because in the end, humanity will actually be better served. But we got to get off this blueprint, this capitalist blueprint, this blueprint where our lives revolve around money. It has to go bye-bye. Now, how we do that? No clue. No clue. We are just now starting to understand that this is the way it has to go, but how do we do it? The other thing is, during this whole process, you have to make sure that oversight is maintained. And without that, you're going to have a lot of people, ambitious people, that are going to take advantage of people that don't know, that don't have an idea or a concept of just how complicated a rollout this is, but also the capabilities of being able to hack or to peer into your thoughts. Folks, this is an amazingly huge thing. And when they say that things like this will be a reality within 20 years. And I'm going to give you an example of how we get this estimate wrong all the time. Think, for example, Star Trek, right? Star Trek in 1967, I think it was, or in and around that time, was an incredibly forward-thinking show Gene Roddenberry was a was a visionary. And a lot of the things that he saw as being 23rd century technology, we've already surpassed in 50 years. So if they're telling you that in 20 years it's going to happen, folks, it's going to be more like 5 or 10. That's when a lot of this stuff starts to roll out. So pay attention because AI is coming fast and furious. And the only way I believe truly that you are going to be able to manage it for yourself properly is to really do your homework on it before you start bringing AI into your life. And by the way, you already do. If you use Google, if you use YouTube, if you use social media, guess what? <laughs> AI is already in your life. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Have a great day, everybody.